Perfect. Okay. So here we are uh, to meet again for the SCIC landowner meeting for 2021. And so I want to remind everyone that um, we are here for um, like a redo of our landowner meeting. We originally held one in June as um, kind of required by the bylaws, but we did not meet quorum requirements at that meeting. And so per um, SDIC, I do believe it, it's a bylaws distinction. Uh, if you hold another landowner meeting within 60 days, the threshold for quorum is just 25%. And so uh, currently uh, with uh, 1,419 acres in the district, we have 540 present. And so um, we're good to go on that 25% requirement. And um, I think we can go ahead and get rolling. So um, uh, I know we've walked through this before, but basically we have a couple of things that are a part of an official landowner meeting and that is approving the previous landowner meeting minutes and then um, holding our board elections. And so that will be the main portion of this meeting. And then um, we have some basic requirements as far as financial updates and um, kind of like operations overview that we'll run through. And then we can talk about any new business you all have. So I know that everyone here is familiar with Zoom because we spend a lot of time together on Zoom, um, but feel free to either use the raise hand feature, ask questions in chat, uh, if you have anything as far as uh, while staff presentations are happening. Um, I think I've already covered the call to order and done the forum report, and so we're good to go. Um, so the first item of business is the approval of the 2019 landowner meeting minutes. So I sent those out in the packet that I distributed to you all yesterday afternoon. Um, 2019 was the last time that we held a formal uh, landowner meeting with quorum. And so uh, from the landowners present, I would um, accept a motion or any feedback you all have on those minutes um, at this time. Tom. Yes, so uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the landowner meeting minutes from August 11th. Or the, let's see, the previous meeting was August from June 20th. 2019, is that correct? Yes. So we didn't have a 2020 because of the pandemic? We held one virtually and we didn't meet for them. Okay. So I'm asking for, I'm taking a motion uh, for the June 20, 2019 minutes to be approved. Second I'll second that. that. Great. Um, and so all those in favor of approving those 2019 landowner meeting minutes, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Those are approved. Um, so um, the, now it's time for uh, the elections. So you may recall we hold the elections by um, term rather than by seat. So uh, we would hold um, kind of normally two different elections for uh, the two different terms that are up because uh, we didn't hold one last year. Uh, Ken's um, like election has been pending. And then um, the other two seats that would normally be up for this year are those held by Tom and then one of your vacant seats. And so uh, how will, this will work is I'll just go ahead and open the floor to nominations and for each term and then close them. And then we can uh, take it from there seeing how, once we see how that all shakes out. So to start, I would open the floor for nominations for seat number one. That would be a term ending in um, June, 2023, and it's currently held by Ken Anderton. And any of you can nominate um, each other or any other uh, landowner that you know is qualified, whether or not they are present. So um, do I hear any nominations for seat number one? I would nominate Ken Anderton for seat number one for the Sandy Drainage Improvement Company. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I'll second. Tom Hansel will second. Perfect. Um, are there any other nominations for the seat? Cool. All right. I will go ahead and close nominations for that one. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and open up nominations for the, the two seats for the next term. That would be seat number two. That's currently held by Tom representing Multnomah County or then um, the vacant seat. Um, are there any nominations for uh, those two positions? I would like to nominate Tom Hansel for seat number two for the Sandy Drainage Improvement Company. 
And I will uh, second that. Great. Is there anyone else that uh, you all would like to nominate for that vacancy at this time? Otherwise, um, you all can always, um, when you're acting as a board, appoint someone midterm. And so um, certainly we can revisit that um, at any time if you'd like. Um, otherwise, I'll go ahead and close the nominations. And then I think since we have um, less candidates than seats, uh, if you all are comfortable with just uh, adopting the slate of nominated candidates, um, we can do so at that this time. Is there anyone who'd like to have a secret ballot or any other form of voting other than kind of a simple voice vote on the nominated candidates? That makes it easy. So then I would say, um, I would seek a motion uh, to approve the slate of nominated candidates for the two terms. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Is there a motion to approve? Um, I, I would move to approve the nominations for seat number one and seat number two for Sandy Drainage Improvement Company. Great. Is there a second? I'll second that. Cool. So all those in favor of uh, electing those two nominees to the board, um, please say aye. 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 Great. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Tom and Ken. Thank you. Let's play another day. I think a, a hearty thank you also for just being willing to invest your time. We do really appreciate it. And, um, and you guys provide a really valuable and unique perspective on all this. And so please keep bringing it. We really need you. Thank you very much for your time. Emily, is it appropriate just to have a discussion around filling those seats with Ken and uh, Danny? I mean, they have connections in that area. You know, I Why don't, I think the most appropriate thing to do would be, let, why don't you let me add that to your next week agenda and we can just make sure and dedicate some time to it while you are like acting as a board. Great, thank so, you. Yes, I think that's perfect. Um, all right, next up, Janet has the financial update. Hmm. Well, here we go again. <laughs> Uh, this is just a report on the 2019-20 fiscal year financial review. It was completed by James Marta using the accrual method in accordance with GAAP standards. The district received a clean financial audit free of any material misstatements, which is very good. Uh, the tax return was filed timely. And if anybody would like to have a copy of the district's financial audited report, please let me know, or if they're also posted on our website under the document library. That's about it. Thank you. Um, so the other requirement of this meeting is um, a report on the operations of the district. And so I guess, um, Bill, it's up to you. I can, if you have like a basic overview you'd like to do, if you would like me to walk through these slides, like either way is fine. How do you want to run this? Yeah, I'll just do a basic overview. Okay, um, that sounds and, good. And be short and sweet. Um, so next slide, please. So uh, there are four slides in this portion of the presentation. Um, I'll talk about the, the levy and internal drainage uh, assets as part of the flood risk system. Um, a recap of uh, work that, we've, that your board's done with the development reviews uh, and then looking forward. Um, the first slide um, relates to the levy system. Um, MCD staff on your behalf um, made some improvements uh, uh, to the levy system on the riverboard side of the levy system, um, which is a photo on the far left. Uh, we finished up some work on the tow drains on the SDIC on the riverboard, I'm sorry, the landward side of the, of the levees closer to FedEx and the um, um, uh, the city of Troutdale's um, facility. Um, and finally, so that's the photo on the top right with hydro seeding. Uh, and finally, we um, recently um, completed uh, our coordination work with the Corps um, to help them complete their um, periodic inspection of the levy system. And we got, a, um, no, there are no major issues um, beyond what um, staff already know about out there. So um, we're just waiting for the final report. So next slide, please. Reminder, the internal drainage, um, we did some work at the Sandy Pump Station. That's what the top two images show. Um, one was the air relief valve. 
just uh, towards the top of the levee. And then we did some modeling work in preparation to, um, re um, to make some repairs this year and to minimize cavitation of the pumps uh, moving forward. Um, and so we, we were do, we had done some work with our engineering consultants um, to help um, make, move that forward. Um, the bottom right photo shows our partnership with Multnomah County uh, with improvements uh, at the, uh, uh, the drain pipe that goes under Marine Drive that start eroding around that pipe. And so we needed to uh, make some up updates there and uh, the county staff was able to work with that. Uh, and finally, um, we had made um, a new, um, uh, worked with uh, a local uh, developer and, and added a new um, uh, maintenance platform above the culvert near IE4 that drains uh, the very upper uh, end of Salmon Creek. And in doing so, we had to reestablish the beaver deceivers um, that, are, that are shown here in this image. We have two sets of those wire cages that, uh, um, that help um, stump the beavers if you can. <laughs> uh, and uh, many times that works. So, uh, next slide um, deals with the development review. Um, this is something all of you um, probably recall. Um, primarily there was only one um, technical standard that was addressed uh, that was increase in the buffer between the top of the levee and any overhead power lines. We asked that the um, power companies give us at least 35 feet. Um, and through a series of assess uh, analysis, uh, we've discussed um, a change in the fee structure, increasing the base fee, changing the tier two um, structure from a, um, a time materials basis to a flat fee, and then adding some uh, ability to um, charge an inspection fee for a site visit. So in the next slide is looking forward, uh, we're gonna to continue to work with ODOT to, um, to tie in uh, one of the last um, levy uh, segments that are, are missing. Um, and uh, that's near uh, the Graham Road and IA4 interchange. Um, we've had some conversation about that uh, in past. Um, um, the uh, Beaver Translocation Program with partnership with BLM, um, the Oregon Zoo and, and others, it should be kicking off this year. And so this is the Witness protect Protection Program for beavers. And so we, um, we trap the beavers uh, and then eventually they send them off to, um, into the forest or BLM land um, while making a, a pit stop at the uh, Oregon Zoo to make sure they're healthy and ready for action when they get back up into um, the wilds of, uh, of uh, the forest up near Mount Hood and other places nearby. Uh, and finally, we um, do need to make some repairs to the Sandy Outlet structure right at the very end of the discharge pipes. Um, that little water feature there uh, in the photo on the bottom and should not be there and we need to plug that up and uh, complete the inspections of the pipe and gravity flow pipes there. And so that will happen this summer and fall. Those are my four slides if there are Unless there are any questions, um, I can turn it over to Kevin, who I think has the next slide, if, about the 40 mile loop. Hello, uh, yeah, I was just talking about the status of the 40 mile loop trail. I know in our last check-in, uh, the board had requested that uh, we do some outreach to landowners and SDIC regarding the status of this project. Uh, Ken Anderton correctly pointed out that the project had been delayed until next year. Uh, we got an update from some of the project managers at the port. And this project now, uh, what held it up was the right-of-way acquisition. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with that from what happened between ODOT and Georgia Pacific. Um, and uh, anyway, it's our understanding uh, from the port that all their right-of-way issues have been reconciled at this point in time. There's nothing delaying the project. They're just, they have it in their system and it's ready to start uh, and for construction now next summer. Is there any questions about the project itself? Evan, is there anything you want to touch on additionally as far as PMLS updates? Anything new since June that you'd like to report? Uh, no, I think 
you know, we, we came prepared in case there were uh, additional landowners, uh, aside from board members who are very familiar with the basics of the PMLS study. Um, so the only thing that I would add is we had a very successful visit yesterday with the um, General Graham, who is the second in command at um, the National Corps headquarters in DC. And um, we've heard that the signing of the chief's report will be moved up um, to later this month. And so first we were told August 16th, now we're hearing August 20th. My guess is that it's somewhere in the window of the last couple of weeks of August. And we will continue to provide updates as we as we hear more. So happy to take other questions regarding the study if there are any. Evan, uh, the infrastructure pa uh, passage uh, with the Senate uh, is any of that money program to support our work? I hope. I wish. Um, so it's not directly programmed. What we're seeing right now is two really interesting things. So it looks like there's recognition in that package that the Senate understood that they approved 38 feasibility studies all at the same time and that we're all racing towards completion right at the same time. So it looks like there's going to be potentially assuming that package continues to move forward or something similar happens through reconciliation or whatever, whatever the pathway is that they end up taking, um, that there will be a large pot of funding to help the most competitive of those 38 projects continue forward, plus addressing some of the backlog that the core has. The other piece that is really interesting that we are, you know, trying to get more information about is it looks like there is some consideration about local match and whether or not the core will be provided with the ability and flexibility to lower the local match or get rid of the local match in some cases. Um, and you know, it's, when we've asked questions and tried to get more information about that piece, they're, they're still a pretty long way from issuing guidance. And so um, we, you know, are definitely keeping an eye on those those two pieces for sure, as well as some other potential grant funding and other pots of money that are moving forward. But it, it's a really positive sign for us that they recognize that they created a giant group of projects in 2018 that are all moving towards the finish line around the same time, which makes me feel a lot better about um, our chances of staying on the timeline or a, a fast, you know, sort of not being stalled out for years and years and years because there has been this recognition that all these projects are coming forward. I think the, the other interesting point the uh, general made yesterday was OMB and the Biden administration are looking to broaden the criteria they use to evaluate projects for funding and the criterion are going to be a little bit more triple bottom line oriented and probably aiming a little bit more towards low income or underserved communities, which we have uh, a fairly strong analysis in, in our draft report. So uh, it also is more in line with the new district's general authorities. So I think all those things are positive for our ability to work with the Congress to get some funding. Not done yet, to be sure. Anything else on this? Thank you. So um, that's the bulk of our meeting and presentations. Are there any other questions or new business or anything else you'd like me to put on the agenda for the next uh, board meeting when you all are in quorum? Um, or otherwise, I think we can go ahead and adjourn and get this one in the books. Tom, yes. So, Jim, the allocation discussion, is that, are we ready for that to happen? We are going to give time to each of the individual boards in August to go a little deeper into that. And then Tom, you would raise some really interesting questions to me independently and we're close to being able, we hope to get a response to you certainly before your meeting on next week, but I, ideally maybe even this week on some of the questions that you raised with us. So we're working, we're almost done with getting you uh, uh, our view of some of those questions and then we can have a, a really good conversation about it, I think. And, figure out where you guys want to go with it. So, so I'm hearing we might be able to 
talk about it at our next meeting? Yes, that's- we have, we have time on the agenda specifically to, to provide more space and time for that conversation. Excellent, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. And, and your you know, board is not your board is not alone in wanting more time on that. So uh, we want to create the space for all of you to to dig in on it. Yeah, yeah. I guess it was less on the time and more on the authority. Yeah, and so we should have we we will have a memo. I'll have a memo to you uh, before your meeting, and ideally before the end of the week. Um, I'm waiting on some final final review of that. All right, um, if there's nothing else, I think this meeting can close. Um, thank you all very much for your patience. Thank you all for your understanding. I know it's um, awkward to uh, kind of like pull off these meetings, not only virtually, but just sort of with the, the layout of the districts and um, our makeup of landowners. But um, I appreciate all of your help and participation and all the time. And again, to reiterate what Jim said, thank you so much for your service on the board. Um, I look forward to working with you for another year. And I just want to extend my appreciation to uh, staff and supporting SDIC. Uh, without your help, uh, this would this wouldn't happen. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Cool, think cool thoughts for our ops team who's out there in the heat today and tomorrow and the next day. So, governor has got some new uh, OSHA standards. I hope you're reading them. We are in compliance. Yeah. All right, see you all later next week.